All right, we're now talking about chapter 15, section 6 on the autonomic nervous system, and talking about comparison of neurotransmitters and receptors of the two divisions. Before we get into the learning objectives, uh, my apologies for a section we covered previous. We, uh, we moved past section 15.5, not that the autonomic plexuses aren't important, they are just not vital for us at this moment, but there was one section in section 15.4, which... Uh, I neglected to note for you that was important for your study for the final exam, and that was the only sympathetic pathway that's covered on your final exam, the adrenal medulla pathway. You'll need to know these major points, that for the central region of the adrenal gland, it's the medulla, it's medulla. Uh, that's where the adrenal pathway, medulla, uh, medulla pathway uh, exists, and the preganglionic sympathetic axons extend through the sympathetic trunk and the prevertebral ganglia without synapsing in either. The preganglionic cells stimulate the adrenal medulla, uh, cells to release epinephrine and norepinephrine into the blood, and these hormones enhance and prolong the fight or flight response. Okay, that was the only part that I neglected to note was on your exam for that section 15.4, in which case we come back to section 15.6. So the objectives you need to be able to uh, uh, understand and follow after going through this section are to identify the targets, the cholinergic, cholinergic, cholinergic and adrenergic neurotransmitters of the ANS. Describe the two types of cholinergic receptors and the action of each when the trans neurotransmitter acetylcholine binds to them. List the neurotransmitters categorized as catecholamines and name the four adrenergic receptors and give locations of each. And I will note that those adrenergic uh, receptors, although important, will be cursorily uh, covered uh, on the exam. That said, um, with the uh, autonomic nervous system using acetyl uses acetylcholine and norepinephrine, uh, either true neurotransmitter can cause stimulation or inhibition, uh, depending on the postsynaptic receptor. Uh, cells that release acetylcholine are cholinergic, uh, cholinergic neurons, and cholinergic neurons include all autonomic nervous system preganglionic neurons, all parasympathetic ganglionic neurons, and sympathetic ganglionic neurons innervating sweat glands and blood vessels in the skeletal muscle. Uh, the target cells have cholinergic receptors, uh, which you'll need to know for the exam, as well as understanding cholinergic uh, neurons, how they release acetylcholine. Uh, those cells uh, release, the ones that release norepinephrine are energic and adrenergic neurons, that's on the exam, as well as the fact that they are most sympathetic ganglionic neurons are adrenergic, and target cells have adrenergic receptors. Uh, as far as the pathways, uh, generally speaking, it's important to understand the parasympathetic pathway and the sympathetic pathways. Acetylcholine is always playing a role first. It's always playing a role first, okay? If there are parasympathetic pathway, first of all, let's get a little closer. Uh, we have the preganglionic axon, which releases acetylcholine, then the ganglionic neuron, cell body, and the dendrites always contain nicotinic and uh, are contained nicotinic receptors for acetylcholine. And then postganglionic axon releases acetylcholine or norepinephrine. And those target cells contain either acetylcholine receptors, which bind acetylcholine, or norepinephrine receptors, which bind norepinephrine, and the muscarinic receptors of the target cell. Then we get to our sympathetic pathways. And so we have a couple options here in this case. We have in this case here, we have the acetylcholine uh, binding the nicotinic receptors, and then either releasing acetylcholine or norepinephrine. Uh, and with the acetylcholine, uh, being released uh, that binds the muscarinic receptors. If norepinephrine is released, it binds the adrenergic receptors. And that's always the case, uh, norepinephrine with adrenergic receptors and acetylcholine with muscarinic receptors. Uh, when we're talking about, I'm sorry, with the uh, parasympathetic pathway. However, there's also an instance where the preganglionic axon releases acetylcholine directly onto adrenal medulla cells, in which case acetylcholine then binds with nicotinic receptors on the adrenal medulla cell. Okay. Those specific content areas uh, in this diagram will not be on the exam, but the concept you should understand, because uh, you will need to understand uh, that the two main types of cholinergic receptors are nicotinic and muscarinic. That's on the exam. Uh, the details of nicotinic receptors, they're found in all ganglionic neurons and adrenal medulla cells. They're also on skeletal muscle cells at the neuromuscular junction. Uh, when acetylcholine binds the nicotinic receptor, it opens the cation channel, and then the uh, sodium moves into the cell. A lesser amount of potassium moves out, and the cell depolarizes, we talked about this before, with the excitatory postsynaptic potential produced. Uh, some types of nicotinic, nicotinic receptors are the receptors at the neuromuscular junction that are blocked by the carrier, but receptors on ganglionic neurons are not. And for the muscarinic receptors, they are found on all target organs of the parasympathetic division and a few of the, symp of the sympathetic division. Uh, the sympathetic factors within the mus with muscarinic receptors include the sweat glands and blood vessels, the skeletal muscle, okay, which you should know. And all the muscarinic receptors use second messengers 
but different subtypes of receptors have different effects. Uh, when acetylcholine binds to the muscarinic receptors of smooth muscle in the GI tract, it's stimulated to contract more. And when acetylcholine binds to muscarinic receptors on the cardiac muscle, the heart rate decreases. Okay? And those are products uh, specifically uh, with heart rate decrease, going back here, and uh, or more towards smooth muscle GI tract, because these are parasympathetic responses. Uh, these are specific to more towards rest, more towards gastric uh, focus, less toward heart rate increase for uh, stimulus, right? Now, uh, adrenergic receptors, uh, you should understand that norepinephrine is a catecholamine, and certainly that catecholamines are a chemical subtype of biogenic amines, that is on the exam, and specifically that they are ligands that bind to membrane receptors. Norepinephrine and epinephrine are both catecholamines that bind to adrenergic, adrenergic receptors, whereas dopamine stimulates adrenergic receptors at high doses. That's on the exam. Uh, what is not on the exam, but you should know, that two main types of adrenergic receptors are the alpha and the beta receptors. Uh, cells with alpha receptors are typically stimulated by norepinephrine, and cells with beta receptors may be stimulated or inhibited by norepinephrine. Now, those alpha receptors are stimula stimulatory receptors found on most smooth muscle cells, alpha-1, I should say. They're located in most blood vessels for vasoconstriction, the rectus pili uh, muscle, the goosebumps, uh, uterus for contraction, the ureters, internal urethral sphincter, closing, the dilator pupillae or pupillae uh, for pupil dilation, the uh, alpha-2 uh, receptors are located throughout the central nervous system in the pancreas, they inhibit insulin secretion, uh, the GI tract sphincters for constriction. Uh, all the beta receptors are three of them. Beta-1 receptors are stimulatory primarily, located in the heart and the kidney uh, for stimulation. And uh, beta-2 receptors are primarily inhibitory. Uh, they're basically located in smooth muscle vessels, the heart, liver, and skeletal muscle, causing vessel dilation, lung bronchodilation and uterine GI tract smooth muscle relaxation, all parasympathetic type responses, and the detrusor muscle of the bladder for relaxation. And beta-3 receptors could be stimulatory or inhibitory. Uh, they're located in adipose fat tissue, triglyceride breakdown for fuel, and the urinary bladder for smooth muscle for relaxation. Okay. Those individual receptor content areas will not specifically be on the exam, but it's in, like all things important for long-term understanding. Uh, from a clinical view, epinephrine for treatment of asthma, interesting to note that asthma attacks narrow the bronchioles, and bronchioles contain beta-2 receptors, and those epinephrine, and epinephrine binds to the beta-2 receptors more effectively than does norepinephrine, and the epinephrine is used to treat asthma attacks as it is a more potent relaxant of smooth muscles in bronchioles, more dilation. So for section 15.6, what did you learn? Which autonomic nervous system neurons are cholinergic? Which are adrenergic? Uh, where are nicotinic and muscarinic receptors each located? When a neurotransmitter binds to a nicotinic effector, is the effector excitatory, not, not excitatory, excitatory, stimulatory, or is it inhibitory? And what are the different types of catecholamines? You should know all those things. How is it possible for the stimulation of adrenergic receptors to result in either vasoconstriction or vasodilation of selected blood vessels? And that's section 15.6. We'll come back uh, for a brief uh, coverage of section 15.7.